What's going on, everybody? Dylan Napoleon with Cage Side Press, joined today by a former glory kickboxing sensation, the current LFL light heavyweight champion, and an upcoming Dana White contender series fighter, Yusri Belgori. Yusri, how are we doing today, man? Very good. Just finished a great training, uh, one of the last sparrings of the preparation, and I'm feeling great. That's it, man. I'm glad to hear that. Glad to hear you're feeling good. I saw Glover speaking very highly of you today, telling the team how ready you are and stuff like that and how well you've been preparing. But, man, you got to be very excited for this opportunity, another big opportunity for you, Yushri, going back out there to Vegas, fighting in Contender Series, man. Talk to me about the emotions, man. How do you feel ahead of this matchup? Uh, I feel great. Uh, the motion always all, all over the place. That's that's the part of the fight camp, of course. But I I I, I pinpoint it uh, much more at the fight, and it comes all comes together. That's really good. Um, this this opportunity that I got to be on contenders uh, series again is is very important for me because it feels like a, a like a little plateau. Like I've been growing in my skills and my my abilities. So I think uh, that I I belong in the competition of the UFC. Um, but I have to prove it. Uh, I was stuck on this plateau because of the last fight there, um, before the the previous two fights I had in uh, LFL, um, and I feel like I need to crush through it right now. So it's a big, big chance. Absolutely, man. And let's get right into it. Obviously, it's been a year yesterday since you fought on the Contender Series. Yesterday was the 29th. You fought on there the 29th of last year. So this is a special moment. It's almost the one year exactly turnaround. You know. Do these fights, these contender series fights, seeing that you've been through it already, do they bring out a different animal or does it just feel like another fight? To be honest, it's the same. Like a fight is a fight to me always. Uh, but like I said, in the in the big scheme of things, this is a plateau I have to break through. Like if you see it as a pyramid where the UFC champion is like on all the top of the pyramid, then yeah, this is definitely a big step on the stairs. Absolutely. You're taking on a Japanese fighter this next week or a week and a half. Taiga Isawaki, something like that. Japanese mm. Great fighter, 9-1 and one right now, man. Tell me, what do you know about him? Any initial analysis you have on your opponent? Uh, I know he's an all-around fighter. He comes from a Japanese organization called Shudo. Uh, they're always known to have a big heart, uh, you know, to, to, to really give a fight. Um, for, for the rest, you know, t I can't really go into big analysis. Uh, I don't want to give away too much, but uh, I think he's a fighter with a big heart. It says a lot that he took the fight on kind of short notice. Um, but I'm really ready to put up a fight and put up a great fight. I think that was what Contenders is all about, is having exciting fights, and uh, I think he's a great opponent to do that with. Absolutely, man. It takes two to tango, two exciting fighters here. Um, like, I, like you've mentioned, you have to be pretty exciting when you go to Contender Series. You want to put forth the best performance you can. So, you know, when you go out there, you're fighting, obviously, in front of Dana White. Do you feel like having this experience last year on August 29th, do you think that helped you at all? Like, how do you, how more prepared? How easier do you think this will be, being the fact that you've you've already you know done this? Yeah, no, that doesn't change anything. The fact that I was there, because every fight is a fight, even the sparring. You know, like when you get in there, it's just opponent against opponent. I don't even see anyone around that cage. I don't see the crowd, whether it's a big crowd or a small crowd, like in the apex. So that doesn't change a lot for me. For me, what changes is the year that I had, the year of hard training, uh, the two fights I had, the experience, and um, yeah, just the growth. I think this question right here is something that you can provide a cool, a good answer to because you're telling me right now you've grown so much as a fighter over the past year. How do you think that you've evolved, grown as a fighter just in the past 12 months? Um, yeah, well, MMA is a very, very broad uh, spectrum of, 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 of athleticism, right? And, you know, just putting blocks on in every in every box of that like the wrestling here amazing uh, wrestlers uh, especially here in the USA because some people have background of wrestling from kids I can name one guy Austin right here uh, of course Glover Teixeira all the guys that are here have amazing wrestlers so I've I've been uh, growing there a lot uh, always always pushing and um, polishing the striking uh, with my coach in the Netherlands which is Paul and of course the sparring with the most dangerous uh, striker in the world I don't even have to say his name we're right here in his home as well um, so yeah the great sparring and the training based on all different facets has made me a better fighter in all these facets and I'm really happy about that Speaking of that amazing striker and Alex Pereira, of course, I saw an interview last night. I was watching a, a prior, previous interview of yours to help get my notes ready for this one. And you said that Alex Pereira is the calmest fighter that you've ever seen. Nobody, yeah. nobody, you know, passes him when it comes to being so calm and composed during fight week. How has that translated or shined onto you in your career? 
Uh, yeah, I'm trying to implement things that I learned from, from other uh, people that I, I, I aspire to be like, right? And he's definitely one of them. He feels like a big brother, but also like when you look at your big brother, you're trying to uh, sometimes emulate some of his skills, right? And I'm not talking about in the cage at this point, but about this great, great talent that he has of, of being, I don't know if it's a talent, maybe he, he put a lot of work to be like that, but uh, of, of being calm and collective and and have have that uh, that confidence that I do have, but also trans transpire that in in the energy output that I put in the fight week, like relax and calm and and just being present, you know. Of course, man. And I was gonna ask you. Of course, you've been two and two and zero in the LFL cage since you had your last contender series fight, man. You fought once, you know, a big win, and then you fought for the title and, and won that title too. Yeah. You know, can you talk to me a little bit about the mindset that you might have had coming off that loss at the last contender series fight? Obviously, had you been healthy, I feel like it would have been a very different fight. And of course, while I'm at it, Ustri, I have to say much respect to you for still going in there and doing what you did, man. Like. I feel like a lot of other guys may have, you know, pulled out of that fight, yeah. but I, but I saw, you know, why you took the fight. It was your opportunity; couldn't pass it up. So, can you talk to me a little bit about the mindset, the plan that you set out for yourself after that result that night? Yeah. So when we called, uh, for when my manager made contact with UFC about the contender series and and asking if it could be postponed, they said, well, the contender series is full for this year, so you gotta have your opportunity next year, no problem. And we were like, no, we're gonna take this shot and try, right? Otherwise, I would have been here still without having that shot and 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 not not trying and then after yes first of all i had to fight the disease with a lot of um a lot of uh anti how do you call it like doxycycline and all that heavy antibiotics uh and, and and i took the fight on lfl and and the lime came back and i was i was getting sh i was like oh what the f I my wife and everybody was like no you know you can't do this again but I finished, I, this time I finished the antibiotics, got back and actually really tested myself. I had a few weeks left before the fight and I felt fit, uh, got that first round KO and, um, and just keep, kept on getting better, getting my conditioning back and got ready for the title fight at LFL, which was a five round five uh, against the guy I lost from previously. Um, yeah, so that was a great opportunity as well and I was feeling better and I was, I, I was getting ready for the five rounder and I felt... It was a big test for me to see how is my conditioning right now, right? Yeah, um, antibiotics. antibiotics and Lyme disease, they yeah. mess with that stuff yeah. quite a bit, don't yeah, they? Yeah, th that was, yeah, exactly. That was, <laughs> that was hell. And, and to get out of that, I don't know, I felt like a phoenix maybe, you know, like a fire to do that five rounder, win the title, gave me a lot of confidence about my health. And then I had a long time before this contender fight, so I also had a good preparation, you know, nothing come between it and uh, feeling ready. Let's talk about that Lyme disease for just a minute. I know it's something that you don't want to speak about too much, something that kind of, you know, put a lot of roadblocks in the way for you, man. But I'm assuming, did you catch the Lyme disease here in Connecticut? That's what I think. It was either here or in Salt Lake. I do a lot of hiking. We like the nature. We love the nature. And I wasn't, I wasn't, uh, I didn't know it, it happened, but it happens a lot, right? Yeah. The, the reason why I asked that, Ustri, is because Lyme disease is, it was found in Connecticut. So Lyme is a city in Connecticut. Oh, is it? That's, oh, why, that's why I yeah. learned. Oh, I learned something here. Oh, that's, that's crazy. So yeah. I was going to say, man, that would yeah. be some terrible luck. You come to Connecticut, yeah. you contract Lyme disease, you know, but who knows where it came from. Let's, let me ask you the most important question. Re full recovery, I'm assuming you're all the way back and oh, yes. back and better now. Oh, hell yes. Yeah, yeah. I'm feeling better than ever. I'm in the best shape ever. I feel like I'm in my prime now. So it's the, really the right time to get that contract, to make a good show, to show everybody that I'm not just uh, who I think I am, but I'm going to show it in the, in, in the way of, of a great, great performance. Get the contract, fight as fast as possible. Be active. Be active. Of course, let's talk about that plan for just a minute too. Obviously, you, you get the victory here. You're immediately, or hopefully, get it get it pretty pretty impressively. You'll be in the UFC, right, man? Can you talk to me a little bit about the plans that you've set out? Like, what do you want to do in the UFC? How are we going to approach the title? You know, what what's what's the plan when this dream comes true? Yeah. Well, I think uh, for a man, the main mission is to is to be what he can be, right? That's that's my goal, and and I don't know where 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 I can go. I'm just going to try do my best, do everything I can, which means working, working, showing up wherever I can show up and try to be the best that I can be. And that, like I said, in the pyramid, you know, be on top of that UFC. That's the, that's the most important goal. How I'm going to try to achieve it is work my ass off, make sure I show up, make sure I'm active, an active fighter. I don't want to be, a, uh, you know, 
sitting on the couch too much, be the UFC fighter, fight once a year. No, I want to be active as fuck and make sure that I, you know, do this title run and, and get as fast as possible. I'm not going to lie, you three, seeing, like, the training videos, what you've done in glory and in the, in the LFL and stuff like that, man, like, I can't wait to see you in there with some of those top contenders, man. And I just feel like I wanted to ask you, too, how do you feel about the timing here? I feel like, man, like, you might get into the UFC octagon, you might have a couple fights, and you might find yourself up in the rankings. Like, I feel like it could take off pretty quick for you, man. How do you feel about the pacing? What, what do you want, you know, in terms of pacing? Thank you so much. But that's going to be fight for fight. We're going to see how it goes, who I'm beating. Uh, well for who I'll be fighting I really don't know like of course I have a fish and I want to I want to go as fast as possible but it doesn't mean like you know taking the elevator I want to go up that stairs and see wherever you know whatever makes sense absolutely man and two more questions for you I see you had your beautiful family here in the training room today man they're here supporting you jumping around right now having some fun at the gym beautiful moments man what does it mean to see have your family here watching you and and just be in this environment when such a close time is coming up you know an important time at that too you said it perfectly I mean the environment this is the biggest blessing ever of course to do what I to do what I love uh, is very important but the main mission in life I mean the, the, the most important goal is to have a happy life and a happy family, right? And um, that's, that's the first thing. And, and once that's, you know, feeling great as it does, I can chase my own things, which is this, which also also helps in, you know, uh, keeping the family uh, well. And to make that, you know, all together is, uh, is the best thing. You know, I don't even know how to explain it, but I think you did in the question already, like, yeah, to have them in this environment is just the biggest blessing ever. Much respect to your family, of course, man. I know, you know, for your wife, young kids, it's a tough thing to watch somebody like you do what you do, but it seems like they're very supportive, man. They're here in Connecticut with you, which I think is super cool. But I want to ask you, man, you're going to, you know, every time you step up into the octagon, whether it be, you know, regional stuff or, or kickboxing and now the UFC, you have the opportunity to represent the Dutch community and the Tunisian community. Me and you were speaking just a few minutes ago earlier. There's not too many men from Tunisia, at least, you know, represented in the UFC. What would it mean to you to have that opportunity to be one of those guys who's representing and doing big things, you know? Yeah, yeah, it means a lot to me. I mean, I, I'm, you know, I'm really proud of both both of my heritages, uh, the great countries, with great histories, and also great fighters like in the, in the centuries um, uh, before. Um, yeah, right now we don't have too much Dutch fighters in the UFC. We don't have too much Tunisian fighters fighting at the highest level. Uh, but I know a few of them, they're great fighters, great personalities. And I hope, you know, maybe I can carry those flags right now and, and, and make a way for the, for, the, for the guys as well. This might become a big thing in those countries where people might not be too, you know, too interested or tuned into the UFC and yeah, stuff like are. that. They yeah, are, are yeah, they? That's okay, the that's they yeah. are. You know, would you just need some guys to crush that thing? And and you're gonna be one of them. Yeah, I'm gonna try. Do my best. It'd be a, a very cool thing to be one of those few fighters representing those countries, man. But last question for you, Yusri. When you step into that contender series cage on, yeah, September 10th, right? Yeah, September yeah. 10th, week and a half from right now, man. What can the fans, obviously there won't be many fans there, but what can the fans across the world tuning in expect from you that night? Yeah, I'm coming for violence. I'm coming to crush some skulls. I'm coming to bring blood. I'm coming to, you know, do violence in a respectable way. I know it seems, it seems weird for people who are not fight fans, but the people that understand this know that we are coming to really, really do damage. Uh, for making a show like the true gladiators. I know my opponent has the same vision. I know the Japanese are real warriors, you know, and we're gonna, we're gonna try and show that in a gladiator way. Uh, one of us is gonna walk away with the contract. I'm very confident it's gonna be me and, uh, and do it in an exciting way, like I said, because yes, it's not just sports, it's also entertainment. That's it, man. Yusri Belgori, everybody. Tune in September 10th, Dana White's Contender Series, live on ESPN+. Plus. You're going to see this man go into the octagon, do what he does, and as, as God willing, walk out of there with a UFC contract. So, Yusri, I appreciate the time, my man. Thank you, Thank so, you much. so much. Yes, Dana. sir. Appreciate you, too. Little sweaty hands. <laughs>